Hello everyone, uh, my name is Anya Sand and I am a contemporary visual artist based in the UK. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a very important and pressing subject about sustainability in the art world. I'll be also sharing with you some very interesting images. So this lecture is going to be structured in the following way. What's the controversy about sustainability in the art world? Why should we even care about it? How can we respond to it as creatives? My own response as an artist. And what do you think about this issue? So in June 2019, the UK has become the first major economy to commit to net zero emissions by 2050. Net zero emission means balancing the amount of emitted greenhouse gases with the equivalent of emissions offset elsewhere. Chris Stark, chief executive of the Committee on Climate Change, that advises directly to the UK government emphasize that every single sector has a job to do. And of course, that includes the arts. And people have started to take notice holding larger institutions to account. In 2019, thousands of the protesters in the UK and millions around the world joined the global climate strike, the world's largest ever climate protest. Around 200 employees from British cultural institutions like Tate Britain, Tate Modern, the South Bank Center and the National Theater left work and took to the streets in solidarity with young people protesting for climate actions. Roberta Mazzacciodi, cataloger at the British Library, has said that workers in cultural institutions have a big responsibility to hold their management account. To account, the cultural sector is embedded within the capitalist mode of production, which is, reason, which is responsible for the climate catastrophe we're in. In February 2020, the climate activist group, BP or not BP, staged a weekend-long protest at the British Museum in London, calling on the institution to end its relationship with the oil company. BP or not BP intervention brought together 1500 people and featured 13 and featured a 13 foot tall trojan horse this was a reference to the ongoing um, uh, institutions exhibition troy myth or reality sponsored by the oil giant along with banners bearing the message bp must fall clearly the sector knows something needs to change. At a conference also in February 2020, we make tomorrow, artists, activists and institutional leaders gathered to discuss what the art world can do to mitigate or indeed reverse the effects of climate change. Francis Morris, the director of Tate Modern, spoke about the Tate's ambitious sustainability plans by saying, we realized that there was a tipping point that we could no longer just attend to our own house. The institution is now en route to net zero emissions by 2030. But before we even talk any more about responsibility, let's wind back a bit and ask ourselves, what exactly is sustainability? So according to multiple sources, sustainability is about meeting the needs of the present 
without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs. Sustainability can also be broken down into three key areas, economy, society and environment, often referred to as profit, people and planet. So let's consider the latter of these for a moment, the planet. In order for me to continue, I really need to make sure we all understand the very basics. So across the world, more than half of our waste ends up in landfills. I actually remember one of those landfills when I was a child around eight years or nine years old. I asked my parents and my grandparents, how could we possibly create so much waste? And where does this enormous volume of waste goes to? Back then, nobody could answer those questions. But now I know that a landfill is a place to dispose of waste and other materials that are then buried underground and covered with soil. But why should we even care about landfills, right? Talking about landfills isn't particularly trendy or fun, but waste management is something that we as creative people need to get better at understanding if we are going to create more sustainably. Landfills pose a number of environmental problems, um, economic problems and health problems. For example, the chemicals that are produced when rubbish decomposes create a toxic blend that affects the local environment, polluting air, soil and water. Even more alarming is when organic materials is thrown uh, when organic material is thrown into landfill, which releases a greenhouse gas that acts as a blockage to our atmosphere not letting the heat to escape the earth. And guess what? This problem is not going to be solved by itself. It simply cannot be solved by itself. So it would be easy for me to carry on talking about larger art institutions across the world, but something, sometimes it's easier to point fingers elsewhere rather than look at things closer to home. Perhaps the more challenging question to ask is how I individually can respond as an artist. The response is of course in the art I make and how I practice. Two things that I'm going to address over the rest of the lecture. So sustainable art sounds like quite an ambitious title. More simply, it can be understood as art that is produced with consideration for the wider impact to the environment. Sustainable art is art produced in harmony with key principles of sustainability, which include ecology, social justice, nonviolence, and grassroots democracy. According to art historians, Maya and Ruben Focus, uh, uh, Focus, the origins of sustainable art can be traced back to the conceptual art of the 1960s and 1970s, with its stress on how the art system functions. One common image that comes to mind when we say sustainable art is art that in some way engages in and interacts with the environment. Many conceptual artists have, artists have adopted a critical position towards the land art movement of the 1960s because of the lack of concern for environmental consequences. For example, in 1968, Robert Smithson organized an exhibition titled Earthworks. 
with within this exhibition smithson spiral jetty was formed by using over six thousand tons of black basalt rocks and earth from the site to make a coil of 1500 feet long and 15 feet wide smithson was accused of treating the landscape as a giant canvas with a bulldozer for a brush but if this isn't sustainable art then what exactly is an inspiration um an artist that we can draw inspiration from is north is a north american artist john sabro sabro talks a lot about carbon offset and how to make carbon neutral work in particular his work is interesting for me as a painter as he has pioneered a technique for making paint by turning individual acid runoffs into pigment he discovered an orange sludge near ohio which was drained from an acid mine a highly toxic substance that kills aquatic life and managed to turn pollution into paint which is quite genius if you ask me not only does the process filter the waste and improve the cleanliness of the water in his area but also creating an amazing new resource for painting in this way john sabro raises awareness of coil mining pollution through his beautiful vivid vibrant paintings even last year's uh, world biennale had a strong focus on sustainability the world biennale is a traveling innovation laboratory for contemporary arts with a strong focus on sustainability and responsibility the uh, prevailing attitude focused on raising awareness about global climate change asking questions about what was happening in our own backyards all our activities need to be reconsidered if we are truly to green our own practice which is just as or even more important than raising awareness about melting glaciers so sustainability is a huge concept with many ramifications as artists i must revise my craft and lifestyle to be able to practically implement it in 2015 and 2016 when i took a deeper interest in fashion sustainability and art practices my piece bloody decadence challenged my own very questionable values at the time after studying animal cruelty within the fashion industry and learning about the huge amount of waste that's dumped into oceans i created a piece that confronted consumer culture head-on the piece bloody decadence is a fur coat of mine painted over with red paint symbolizing blood bloody decadence to me symbolizes how much we consume without even thinking or needing it i look back and i realize that that piece of art also signaled a huge turning point in my own life when I sold my sports car, stopped buying anything fur and even stopped buying leather, which can be very tricky at times. Of course, I've done some uh, adjustments at home and considerably reduced using plastic goods. When I started becoming more conscious of renewable energy and conservation, I beca it became clear to me that I needed to reflect on how I practice my craft. Um, this started with simple changes for example everything from the table that holds my supplies the canvases paper board i'm painting on or even pencils that 
all come in environmentally friendly forms. And with time, the changes became larger. I started to work by a new motto, reduce, reuse, recycle. Nowadays, I only buy the amount of paint that I'm actually going to need. It's much better for the environment to plan ahead so that you don't end up buying far more than you can actually use. Recycled materials reduce the waste being created and limit the natural resources being destroyed. Therefore, I make a point of reusing boards and canvases, bottles, vases to paint on. I also reuse materials that I find at home or in the park. Uh, recently, I've even made a point of buying reusable masks so that I can wear them and rewear again during the lockdown, that the, the masks. So that, the, so that there is not much waste uh, created from that. My painting Fragile was a culmination of these ideas. Made on a recycled board, I named the piece Fragile. I focus on um, leftover package tape to highlight how fragile our planet is and how easy it is to recreate as artists. Something else worth mentioning is how we move around. I started taking a train far more and I try not to attend international events unless I absolutely have to. On a more domestic level in London, for example, I ride a non-electric scooter and my son does too, in addition to all of my friends that I can convince to do the same. Um, as I explored and uh, explored in another work of mine, called Artivism Playing with Shadows that you can now also see on your screens. It is clear to me that the art community has a duty to come together and stand up for what we believe in. The piece itself depicts a shadow implying that every action has a consequence and will follow us wherever we go. I think as an art community, we should stand together to protect our planet. As people, I think it's very important to not only make practical efforts within our lives, but also become more politically aware and active. There are some incredible artists using their works to raise awareness about climate change and forcing us to reconsider our impact on the environment. And I, for one, think it's a very exciting time. I would like to finish this lecture by considering an image of Francis Alice's iconic intervention on the landscape called When Faith moves mountains. The phrase moving my mountains reminds me of the importance of the environment and just how crucial the art sustainability movement is at this very moment. It also speaks to us how hard this work is going to be. However, what we are capable to achieve when we work together. And I'm fortified by the idea of achieving something incredible as a collective. It is my intention as an artist to make the necessary changes to my practice. And my invitation to you as fellow creatives is to do the same with yourselves. Before we finish, I would like to ask a few questions that might just inspire some changes in your lives. What are the repercussions if we don't take art sustainability seriously? Are you prepared to live with those repercussions? What are the changes, big or small, that you can make in your lives? 
And how can you inspire and encourage those around you to do the same? Thank you everyone for attending. Uh, it was a pleasure and I am looking forward to your questions and your comments.